Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for joining us at Operation Olive Branch. We are a grassroots movement aimed at amplifying the voices of Palestinians. And today you will get to meet one of our OOB families. Minna lives in the West Bank of Palestine while her sister's family is currently displaced in Gaza. We'll get to know her better today on OOB Live. I'm Ryan, an accomplice here, and I'd love to start by introducing you to some of the OOB family here that might be familiar faces to some of you. Um, we'll just go around the room, and at the end, we'll come back to Minna. We'll save the best for last. So if we wouldn't mind, uh, our friend here, Mustafa, would you like to just start off by just giving us a brief introduction of who you are? Sure. I'm Mustafa. I'm a social worker. I live in the United States, and I'm just so happy to be here to support everyone that I can. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. We appreciate your help. Mikal, my friend Mikal. Hi, everyone. I'm Mikal. Um, I'm a funder for two families. I am helping out, and I'm glad to be here and supporting Minna and her family. Yeah, awesome. Monster Myron. Hi, I'm Myron. Uh... <laughs> uh, I, met, Myron. I met Minna like um, uh, how many months ago and uh, we really connected and, um, you know, I'm glad to help her on this live, this new uh, YouTube live thing. That I've never done before, but never. Yeah. Not once. Well, we're Not glad to have you. Thank you for supporting. Uh, Minna appreciates it, and we certainly do. Cat attack. Meow. Hi. I uh, also go by, you know, cat <laughs> for short. Um, I help host some lives on TikTok for some of the families, and I've just been helping out in any way that I can. Yeah, big help to the families for sure. And again, being able to meet the families face to face is an excellent way to not let their stories, you know, happen in the dark. We need to bring this to the light. Farron, an introduction, uh, if you will. Oh, Good morning. Hello. I'm from Florida. I don't know if I have to say where I'm from. Um, no, I'm <laughs> organizing for one family in Arafa. And I've been doing some lives as well. And I appreciate all of you so, so much. And I'm happy to be here. Right back at you. Right back at you. Um, again, best for last. So this is our lovely Minna, who will be telling us today about her family, um, who is, again, currently residing displaced in Gaza. She <clears throat> is this direction. She is in the West Bank. And, you know, you'd think that living so close in close proximity that you would be able to spend a lot of time with your family. But I'm um, learning your story. I found that that is simply not the case because of, you know, apartheid and segregation. So learning, listening to people who are being oppressed by our tax dollar is something that we, we should be doing. We should know what is happening with our money and, I, I can't wait to learn a little bit more about your family today, Minna. So let's let's get to know you. Hi, everyone. Salam alaikum. Good morning and good afternoon. It's 6 p.m. here, and I do really appreciate you waking up so early to do this uh, with me to support my family as well. So, Ryan, as you mentioned that I based in the West Bank, um, and I'm trying to help my sister, who's uh, trapped in Rafah at the moment. Uh, my sister, Raghda, she's uh, 30, 38 years old. Uh, she got married a long time ago in Gaza. She got married like um, an early, early age. However, she had a very nice, she, she's having still now, alhamdulillah, a nice husband, four kids, uh, Muhammad, Minna, Yumna, and Ali and her husband, Tamir. Uh, they were like such a happy family, like other any, any other families in, in the world, not even in the West Bank or Palestine. Uh, 
um, they are highly ed educated. Uh, my sister uh, used to work as an HR in a private company in Gaza. Uh, Tamer, uh, he he finished just the high school. Uh, Minna, she's uh, she's she's studying at Al Azhar. She used to study at Al Azhar University, uh, computer science. Uh, Muhammad, business administrative, and Ali and Yumna still at school. Um, Raghda worked so hard uh, to maintain safety and to secure her family um, safety all over the years. As you may all know that Gaza has been targeted uh, many times and witnessed many, many wars. Um, but never, never, they never, ever had the chance to witness such an atrocity, unfortunately. In this uh, G side that is going on on the Strip, my sister lost her house on the second day of the um, of the of the G side um, on October the tenth at ten uh, thirty p.m. Uh, they got just a phone call from ITF uh, requesting or forcing them to leave the house in five minutes only. So they were confused to what what to take or how 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 they will leave without anything. So they left without taking any belongings, not even medication, medical reports, uh, passports, IDs, nothing at all. They just left the house with the, um, uh, with Bragda just took her uh, house keys with her. Um, she was, she was trying or, or thinking, she thought that she will go back to the house the next day as usual. Uh, but, after two days, she went back to the neighborhood and she found her house demolished to the ground. She could not find any belong belongings, not even a photo, a single photo of, of, of her family um, at the uh, rubble. And that was um, like a concerning and alert for me here in the West Bank and trying to help her as much as I can. So with, with, the, with the help of Tamer's family, uh, they went to some relative house. They st stayed there for like um, uh, three, uh, one week. And then they started to like evacuation them from area to another. Um, when we say evacuation, it's not like evacuation on your own uh, behalf, like you are the one who wanted to evacuate yourself, not at all. Uh, you are forced to leave your house, your area, by the ITF in order to save your life. But unfortunately, everywhere they go, every single house they went to, they were, have been targeted. So Raghda and the rest of the family uh, fled five times um, uh, from uh, till till they secured Rafah and uh, reached Rafah and secured safety in Rafah. The first area that they they, they went to uh, Deir al Balah, they stood there for like a one month and a half at Tamer's uh, relatives, and then they were like forced to to evict to 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 leave the house um, again by a, by a phone call. So they left everything behind and run, uh, ran away to an Nusayrat camp. Uh, Raghda told me that the most hard situation she faced with her uh, family, with my nieces and nephews and my in-law, in an Nusayrat camp, she, she told me that she felt the 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 the, the, hung, the 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 starvation over there because they were like isolated from all over the uh, the, the Gaza district there was there was no food no water even medication so for Tamir which I will uh, I will uh, introduce his story after I finish this part of the uh, forcing people to leave their their houses and areas uh and they she told me that she used to wrap um like a, a, t a tissue or a, a scarf on her stomach just to not feel the hunger of like 
there is there was no food so she used to to trap her 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 stomach with um uh, a scarf or a tissue like i don't know what kind of, of scarf she used or like that was so hard to hear actually so afterwards they were forced again to flee to another area so they went to Khan Yunus uh, to Mustashfa um, al, uh, to al, al uh, Nasser uh, hospital and then this hospital were targeted so they they flee to Rafah they had to bought uh, a tent with uh, 900 dollars however it it must be an aid for all the, 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 the refugees that flee from the north to the south. Uh, now they are fine, but they are not really, really okay. Like, they're okay, but not fine. They are trying to, to save their lives. From, uh, I'm trying here to raise up the voice of, the voices of Raghda, Tamir, uh, Muhammad, Yumna, and Ali, and Manna. So... If you if you heard about my story, I've been in, on TikTok for several times since since the war started, and then it's like shifted to G side, unfortunately. So Tamir, my brother-in-law, um, had uh, a kidney transplant four years ago, and now he he used to live in one kidney with one kidney only. So and he had a kidney failure before. So doctors in a Shifa hospital in Gaza decided to get him a donor uh, for having a, a new kidney. So after like a long journey between Egypt and Al Shifa hospital in Gaza, they were secure to, to they were uh, yeah secure to have like a kidney uh, for Tamir, and he had the surgery at Al Al, Al Shifa hospital in Gaza four years ago. And Alhamdulillah, that was an amazing and um, an amazing job to achieve. Like, imagine that you are in Europe or in the state, you will be suffer to have like um, a donor to get a, a kidney. Imagine. So imagine the situation in Gaza. You are sieged for seventeen years, uh, and you are not allowed to travel for any medical treatment. And you are not allowed to even get your medication. So, alhamdulillah, he, he got the kidney. Uh, it's functioned well. But unfortunately, nowadays, Tamir is threatened to have a 90, 90% of kidney failure again. So, um, I'm here with the OOB, with you all guys, to... Um, try to reach the goal for my sister family on GoFundMe so sh so they can all evacuate Rafah as soon as possible. So this photo that we are all saying now, uh, this is Tamir before years, years ago, like uh, 2013 and 14. He had a tumor uh, between uh, the hearing canal and the... the uh, to till the back of, of, of his head and, and neck. So in this uh, photo, he had like two surgery and they removed the tumor, alhamdulillah, and he's, his, he, he lost his hearing uh, sense for, 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 for days and months. But with, with, the, with the medical treatment and the surgeries he had, he were able to get back his uh, hearing sense again. Uh, so yeah, I was in, in this you know, period of time with them. And as you may know that if you are living in the West Bank, you cannot go to Gaza. Vice versa for Gazans, they cannot go to the West Bank whenever they want. They, they are allowed to visit uh, the West Bank only if they have a medical issue. They will get a medical treatment uh, permit to get treat treatment in West Bank hospitals or so-called Israeli hospital. So this is Tamir and this is Minna. Um, Minna is responsible for, for, for uh, Tamir's medication and health care. She st stayed there for, for her father trying to... Um, 
uh, to assure him again that he will be fine. Um, so she's accompanying Tamir all the time in this um, in this period in in Rafah. And one thing one thing that is important to mention that Tamir and the two kids, Muhammad and Ali. Since the start, since October last year, they have been seeking the car as a shelter to sleep in day and night. So imagine that you are living in a car, like a small, small car, day and night. Imagine the, the huge um, uh, amount of viruses and the, 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 the area is, is not really clean, the lack of hygiene as it affected them all. So Ali got uh, hepatitis, Muhammad as well, Minna got hepatitis as well, uh, Yumna, she had this, um, like, I don't know, medical, uh, I don't know how to, to, to say it in, in, in English, but she had this uh, situation of fainting a lot in, in the tent, uh, in the market, anywhere. Uh, due to the lack of um, vitamins and clean food and water. So um, with you guys, I was able to reach um, not half of my, my goal, like 60% of my goal. So the goal is, as you all may know, know and hear, that uh, $21,000 and we are now $13,000. So I'm so glad that you here supporting me and trying to support uh, my sister as well to reach the goal. And I just wanted to share with you all that we finally got the approval from uh, GoFundMe team to weather the $13,000. So I'm planning to weather the money and try to um, evacuate three of uh, my sister's uh, family member. Uh, the most uh, uh, important and uh, number one priority is Tamir uh, to evacuate him in order to get his uh, medical treatment in Egyptian's hospital. One of the most uh, important thing that he will do in Egypt is a kidney biopsy to see if his kidney working well or not, as well as many other tests like blood tests and uh, pressure uh, tests as well. Um, this is one of the good news that I, I have to share it, share it with you all. I'm so happy, alhamdulillah. And this is back to, to all of you and other TikTokers on the TikTok uh, platform. Uh, the second uh, bad or, or, or the second thing is a bad news about Tamir that he cannot move nowadays. Something went wrong with his knee, so he cannot walk or even uh, like he cannot even sleep because he had much pain in his knee. Uh, there is nothing to do. They went to the uh, like a medical point, not a hospital, medical point in a tent. And they uh, just told him to take painkiller. And this is the most like uh, bad things that you cannot find a painkiller pain in, in, in Rafah. So my sister were like doing a massage for his knee and drabbing it with uh, olive uh, oil, like the, tra the old traditional uh, um, uh, treatment. So... He's okay, but he cannot walk. And if he needs to walk or to get up of, of, of the car or someone needs to carry him, like not fully carrying him, he need, or he needs a stick to walk in with, sorry. Awesome, so, uh, so I just want to tell everyone too as well, um, with the pain meds, um, a lot of pain meds you can't take if you have kidney issues. So he would need very specific pain meds in order for him to help and without worsening his kidney function. So that's like another concern and another like element of it that um, makes it more difficult. Yes, yes, indeed, uh, Kat. 
And one of the good, the other good news that we were able to secure Tamir two patch, uh, patch of of, med, of medication through um, one organization on TikTok, and the other one like individual um, uh, work uh, through. Yes, this is it uh, through um, uh, some TikTokers. So yeah, alhamdulillah. After this photo, Tamir were so tired. He cannot even walk, and he needs some help to get him to the uh, bathroom to get uh, breakfast if they have breakfast uh, that day. And if like the, the the his voice, his voice is very very concerning me. Like he cannot even take the normal breath, not at all. And one of the important things that I have to mention that the heat, the heat wave that they are witnessing in, in, in Gaza, there is no uh, air in Gaza. Seriously. They live in a tent, tent made of wood and plastic, so they, can, they cannot even breathe well in this uh, atmosphere. And as as you know that your kidney is responsible for your uh, dehydration. I, if I ha if I got any mistake in ter in medical terms, please cat uh, come in and help me. So he's sweating uh, too much, uh, Tamir, and the lack of clean water does not help him to move, uh, like to, to to stay alive. So. Everything in, 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 in Rafah um, is like disappointed um, Raghda, Tamir and the kids. Like even, even the internet connection, you cannot find it. Like, Alhamdulillah that I get the chance to get these photos, but not all the time that I can, I can talk to them. And I feel sorry, actually. I feel sorry for, for my sister and for other uh, families in Gaza that they are witnessing such an atrocity. Like, why in the world such beautiful people would like, not, not would like, well, like, why? They are, we, like, in general, we are human beings and we love life. We need we love. We are highly educated people. We uh, we do everything. There is not. There is no differences between you guys and us. This is Minna and Yumna. And for for the one who who does not know me well, like the only chances that I had to meet my sister. When she was here with Tamir for medical treatment only, like four times, maybe five times, years, years ago. Like the last time I saw Tamir back in 2018, when he came, uh, came here for a medical treatment. And this photo was back in 2013. So it's not an, it's not an easy task to adapt that you cannot see or hug your own sister. The only thing that we had to, uh, like WhatsApp call, um, uh, regular phone calls, and video calls, and that's it. So um, I'm not sure, or let me say that I have still this hope that I will be able to evacuate them once I reach my goal. If not, um, I don't know how much should I give more to save my, my, my sister and her family. So I count I on you. I really uh, into the work that you are doing, guys. And I do appreciate it. Like, I, do, I just don't want to... to, to to get in or to, to have false hope evacuating my own sister and her uh, kids, especially that my brother in law is very, very sick. So I hope through this uh, live 
on YouTube for, for, for the first time, people will hear the story, like a different people that we know, we all know from OBB or TikTok will hear the story, try to push a little bit on the GoFundMe account. Hala, I know that the, the currency make people like hesitate on, on, on contribute, but it's so easy. I've been like, um, I wrote uh, the conversion between the Danish kroner to USD, how much for like $10, $20 and 50 and 100. So please do not be confused. Uh, just read the story. It's, it's on the top of, of the GoFundMe story. You will find $10 equals uh, 70 uh, Danish kroner. Um, uh, 20, uh, one, 150 yeah, yeah. Danish kroner, and so on. So <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm happy, actually, that I had the chance to create them a GoFundMe account uh, f- with, with the help of a friend of mine who lives in, in Denmark. His name is Shadi. I'm so proud to have him as a friend, as a brother, actually. Uh, he was there for me as you guys were there for me and still fighting with me to, to, to reach our goal. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, any concerns, so, or, or, or if I missed anything. I think maybe what we, we could explain to our audience who, who doesn't know you, because we here are, are, you know, we've been able to talk to you for weeks now months, what, <laughs> however long it's been. Um, the reason that Minna is, is, has to protect her identity, you know, the reason why she has, yeah. you know, stickers on her face or why she's wearing her kofia over her face is um, because she has to protect, um, she has to protect her identity because she has already had some issues. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you care to talk about that, but that could be something that might confuse people as to, you know, why sometimes people have, you know, covering their face. This is a dangerous situation. It is. It is, um, uh, especially when you are based in the West Bank, you cannot protect how dangerous you are in this like situation. However, you have the freedom uh, to use mm-hmm. internet, to travel, to drive, to go to work, to school, university. But with the situation, unfortunately, we are threatened by ITF and Israeli government yes. um, that we will lose work permits, medical permits. Um, for, for the ones who does not know about the West Bank, you are not allowed to travel to Jerusalem unless you have a, um, a permit. This permit will allow you to, to travel to East Jerusalem and Tel Aviv, wherever, wherever you want to go there, um, because you don't have the blue ID. So we have the green ID. So we are not allowed to visit uh, Jerusalem unless you have the permit permit for uh, medical treatment or a worker. So uh, in, in my case, unfortunately, I was reported uh, because I've been using TikTok to, wear, to, to, to raise up awareness about my sister case. And unfortunately, I lost my work permit. So that's why I have to come over here, guys, covering my whole face. But I promise you, I'm here just to evacuate my sister, not nothing else. Like I need to save their lives and that's it. Right. Right. Um, so that's what, that's the kind of issues that our friends are dealing with. We, you know, I know what you look like. I have your pictures. Like we had this conversation beho- beforehand. What can I, and can I not show? Because there's a huge risk for you in speaking out simply, simply, to save your family's life. It's yeah, it's yeah, it's insane. It's unfair um, is. to live so close yet so far. Yeah. And- I, uh, send it, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but if mm. I want to visit Gaza, I need a special permit. Imagine. And it will take me 
two days to reach Gaza or one day, like 24 hours or uh, 48 oh hours. God. And sometimes they will like let you go through the, the checkpoints and everything. And once you reach Ares checkpoint, the, the, the only checkpoint that allows you to, to cross Gaza, sometimes the soldiers will tell you, okay, no, you are not allowed to come and bye bye get back to or go back to your uh, to the to, to the west bank to oh whenever you yeah so after all that time spent waiting going through whichever checkpoints whatever you mm -hmm. might have to turn around and go back yeah 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 and imagine if you you know or, if you're ill doing things yeah. like this yeah yeah like you know your brother-in-law is tamara's uh, yeah. having to he can barely walk right now because he hurt himself yes. but even if if his knee was not injured he's still very ill from not having yeah. his medicine his as cat said his kidneys are unable to really i don't know how they're processing the water the the contaminated water that he's drinking um the big concern with that is um it's been really hot like as Mino was saying, like in the hundred, like for for Americans, like a hundred Fahrenheit. Yeah, and you can imagine even when you have normal kidney function, it's hard to stay hydrated. But your urine is what kind of helps you stay hydrated. So if you don't have working kidney function, it's much much easier to get really dehydrated and to get really really sick in the heat. So. She is really close to her goal for getting them out. And I'm very concerned about him, especially within this heat and being in a tent. Um, so it is really important. And yeah, I can't imagine. I think also like a big thing with the checkpoints is how much time they take away from you guys. Like that's something I feel like it's not talked about. Like if you're trying to work and have like enjoy life, like imagine how much time it would take to like go yeah. to these places they just waste all this time. Yeah. Standing yeah, around. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Like you you yeah. you can wait on the checkpoint to cross the borders for like hours. Literally hours, hours to to, to just reach your workplace or to go to the hospital. Like um and for for most people who really uh need medical treatment in the West Bank they must uh, get a medical referral from the Ministry of Health in order to get uh, proper uh, medication or medical treatment or hospitalization in Israeli hospitals. So sometimes they, they stop the ambulances that are uh, transferring the patient from area to another and um, like destroying the, 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 the spirit of you as a human being. It will be destroyed. Like, we do not deserve, deserve to live such a life. And that's it. Like, punked. Yeah, I, I, that, I get frustrated, like, seriously, going to Disneyland, waiting in the line for a couple hours for a ride. Like, I'm, not that this is comparable, but could you imagine that your life is spent hours and hours for simple things? Not even, you know, just to work, just to be yep. able to support yourself. And you're spending, you have to... Add it factor in hours and hours of your day of commute yeah. and then you might not even make it you can't plan things i think that no no not at all not at all seriously even even inviting your friends from jerusalem to to the west bank you cannot like they they, they might close the borders in any minute yeah right? I mean I just imagine that, like literally never really be able to plan anything and your just day could be completely upended at any moment. That's yeah. Yeah. So yeah, guys, it's it's hard to live actually here. It's hard. Um sometimes they need to adapt the situation, as my coworkers say, because they are from the States. But my my question is for how long or how how should I adapt such a situation in Gaza? Like, how should I adapt or witnessing my sister threaten to be killed in any, in, in, or unalive in any minute? You can say killed here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, imagine that you have this concern day and night. Right. It's just terror. It's being tortured. 
listening to those drones, like even when I like, you know, when you scroll on TikTok and you just hear it, it's I mean, I hear plane right now. It just came in and I'm immediately thinking of Palestine. I can't imagine what like your nieces and nephews are dealing and, and, you know, adults alike. But, uh, you know, I'm always concerned with what the children and how they're handling this when like all their their school, their education, like everything's just been upended. Yeah. Um, I, well, I, they, they are destroyed. They are traumatized. Uh, before we had this live, I had the chance to talk with Ragda and uh, my two nieces. Okay. After then, they got an internet connection. Uh, it's a point, point something. I don't know. This is the first time that I'm hearing of this connection. Like, if you got a point from the Egyptians or the ESIM, you can talk uh, and have the the internet uh, connection back. Okay. So, yeah, Menna recorded me, the drone above her head, and she 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 told me, wrote me, I cannot handle it anymore. I'm going to be crazy. I'm losing it. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know, we do have a video. Um, the one that you sent me. Would you mind yeah. if we played that of her? The one where she's thanking yeah, yeah, us? Yeah, yeah. Of, course, of course, yeah. And the reason well, I want to play that is because I just want you to hear, like, if you've not been able, you know, if you're in the audience and you've not come across, like, some of the media of what daily our friends have to listen to, um, it, it would drive you insane. Give me a second. I'm just going to make it a little bit larger here. Okay, so just listen. Dear OOP team, dear Mylon, Ryan, and Kat, I hope all is well. I want to thank you for your consistent support towards our goal and go help me to reach safety and help my father get a proper medical treatment. Thank you so much. Keep the good work up. Okay, that one wasn't that one wasn't so bad because you can um, hear that she's somewhere with where there's a um, bunch of people. But that one that one um, she sent last night, menacing last night, and it made me cry because that was just. Yeah, I'm so uh, sorry. Guys. No, I'm so sorry. You know no, what? No, you stop I... apologizing. Oh my gosh, I don't. <laughs> I don't mean cry. Like I just mean like I. I don't know. Yeah. Like it just it it touches me, and I want. I want them to be safe and I want them to be happy. Yeah, I know. The, the, she's she's always like asking me like where we are on the GoFundMe. When where or when are we 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 will we will be able to evacuate? It's been long 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 time. She she was she like she she's she's I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm losing my my sentences and word and uh, okay. when I'm speaking on behalf of them. But like, I, I don't have anything to to provide them. Like even sending them cash, it's impossible now. Like if you want to 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 send two hundred dollars, they will take like twenty percent um, of of the two hundred uh, dollars. Or sometimes twenty five, or sometimes uh, fifty. Wow. Like I cannot send them cash. I don't have that much of cash, of course. But sometimes they need they need to to buy water. And now they are just um, depending on the 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 water that came from the camp that they are in. And uh, three day uh, four days ago, Menna was sick because. Um, the people who are responsible of the tanks, water, uh, they forgot the, to close it. So a bird were like in the water, died <gasps> in the water, and um, causes some like affection of all, all, all the people in, in the camp, oh, including no. Menna. So they are not drinking as well a clean water. Oh my goodness. That's yeah. so gross. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but these are the conditions that they're living with. Every day yeah. is a fight for for survival. Yeah, I mean, I mean we're not just okay. Yeah, the, there's bombs, there's drones, there's helicopters, quadcopters. Is, I mean, this is, 
yeah, this is one war. And the second, yeah. fighting for, for being alive, fighting to get exactly. uh, clean water, fighting to get um, uh, food. Exactly. That's and exactly the, what it yeah, is. And, and the prices there are very, very high. Very Are you high. able to speak to that at all? Are you able to tell us, um, like, what some prices of, like, the inflation difference between, like, pre and, and now? Yeah, okay. So, uh, in the past, it's well known that Gaza, one of the most air, cheap, like, cheapest area markets in, 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 uh, in, in the Strip. Like, you can get a food, uh, drink, you can go to, the, to a restaurant, like, Gaza, uh, sorry, Ragda family, if they go to a restaurant for a high class a restaurant in Gaza, they will pay uh, for, for dinner like, um, I think, 70, uh, $70, okay, or 100 let's say. And nowadays, they are trying to get some flour for, um, for $800. Sugar for, for $70. What? Yes, and I think Fadi uh, facing the same situation. Oh my lord! Yeah, and wow. Nutella. You all aware for of the Nutella chocolate? Yeah, it's uh, almost um, uh, thirty or thirty-five dollars. Wow! Holy yeah. moly! Yeah, so the last time Yumna were asking about uh, the Nutella, and they went to the to to the next uh, next door market, and my sister couldn't afford it. Oh. She couldn't afford it. She told uh, Yumna, "And no, I'm sorry, I can't get you anything else, but not Nutella." So they went to got sneakers or uh, Mars. They were so expensive. So my sister told Menna, I'm sorry, I cannot afford it. Like the, uh, the sneakers bar is like for like uh, 20 bucks. Oh my, I don't even know what to say to that. How do you live? You I don't. don't know. Yeah, we yeah, don't. We don't eat sometimes. We don't, we don't. And for, for the West Bank, we are living in a very um, high expenses alive, like routine. Everyone, everyone say that Ramallah, mm, Ramallah, Nablus, Jenin, uh, Hebron are the most expensive area in the West Bank. Like our prices here, higher than other uh, country in Europe or on the state. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The, the rent house is uh, are very ha higher, like very, very expensive. Like you cannot get an um, fur furniture apartment or a studio less than $1,200. Studio, we are not talking about a whole house with front and backyard. Right. Like one, one room studio, $1,200. And okay. our salaries here are not higher as uh, Jerusalem. Right, I was going to say, like, or, what, yeah, are you, what are you making? Like, if you're not, that's already a high price. Yeah. And if you're not making like, a good salary, a good wage. So, um, like, uh, teachers here, uh, the, the salaries for teachers in the West Bank and Gaza are uh, the same. Uh, almost because they are working on honor schools, they got like uh, six hundred dollars per month. Ooh. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh god. Uh, unless you are working in a private sector or international institutions, here a different story. Like uh, for people who are working in a different and in a private sector, they will get like one thousand two hundred. Uh, per uh, month uh, for in international institution it depends on the in institution itself if uh, Americans or European one so it's like um, the salaries the start is at, uh, starts at um, 2500 and th it depends on your uh, education if you got a master's degree it will be different PhD it will be more different like uh, the, the, the higher uh, education you are the higher salary you get. 
in international institutions only or NGOs. And I've noticed how um, education is so important to our Palestine. Like everybody's educated. Everybody is. is getting like yeah. a college education. And I'm a little bit jealous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so even to have the education, right? And mm. then because of all the, of the, you know, blockades, et cetera, et cetera, apartheid, whatnot, you're still, even with that education, not necessarily going to be making like a, a huge amount of money. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Can I jump yeah. in real quick? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, you know, as you're talking in the expense and the cost of not only, you know, the food items in Gaza right now, but also just the living expenses for you, you know, having a job and trying to make ends meet day by day. I cannot imagine what it's like, you know, not being barely being able to support yourself with what you make. And then on top of that, having a family that can't work because they're in that condition and not being able to, knowing that they cannot provide for themselves. I, I just want to express how my condolences for you because I cannot imagine that situation. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mustafa. But at the end, I needed to, um, to do a double shift work. So at the beginning of the war, I had to work double shift in order to support my sister with, with some cash. As a freelancer, I don't have a, like a settled job. I don't have a settled salary. So I had to work double shift. So that was the, the most hardest thing on me because I need to stay like um, all night uh, uh, um, trying to spread awareness about my sister campaign. Uh, the day uh, I just need to work like uh, like five hours, five, five hours here and there in order to get more cash. Oh, and my. because they left without like anything, they, they lost everything. So I'm the only one who can provide them with some help. Even even with the help, like, like, like you cannot mention that help, but I helped them like at the beginning of, of the war after they lost their house and lost everything. Imagine that I had to, to shoot them um, uh, a new passport and each passport uh, cost, costed me um, 70, 80 dollars for, for each person. Wow. Yeah. And there are six, six family members. Right. Yeah. Like this and is I a had... lot if you wanted to go on vacation, you know, you're yeah, like, yeah. oh gosh, okay, let me think. Can I, can we afford the... But in an emergency situation and now you've got to drop all this cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you cannot save here anymore. Like right. in our culture, you need to, to work uh, hard, fast, in order to keep you alive, in order to pay your house rent, your telephone rent, your your uh, insurance, uh, for your car, for your health, for everything around you. And uh, honestly, honestly, no one, even in Gaza or West Bank, imagined that Gaza will witness such an G-side. Like, we imagine that okay, it will be like uh, like other the, the others um, the other previous uh, war in Gaza, like 2018, 14, mm -hmm. 10. But that was like I don't know. Sometimes I'm walking and talking to myself, like in like what should I do? Who should I go for? Uh, who should I ask for some help? Um, I reached Heal Institution and they said that we cannot help. Mm. I reached uh, PCR, uh, Palestinian PCRF, I guess. They said we cannot. 
uh, help in this regard. You cannot even provide the cash or medication. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah, um, I've been in contact with uh, several institutions or NGOs in Canada, but unfortunately, they said, "Oh, sorry, we cannot help." So, who should I go for? Like, and serious, seriously, like I don't have anyone. Like, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a person with a, with a great power here. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a regular human being. Hmm. Right. Yeah. What do you, and I just I I would love for the audience you know if you're watching now if you're watching later, as you're listening to Minna's story is just to simply put yourself into her position. What do you do? What can you do? And I'm just so thankful that there are human beings out there like you guys here, like the OOB accomplices and all the amazing people who have donated contributed at, and you know even those who haven't been able to contribute they use their platform they use their voice they they are out sharing flyers um I, I am thankful so much for that but you know this must be so incredibly frightening um anxiety inducing to know your family is just within arm's reach and the only thing you can do is is pay an, an extortion fee to get them to safety while bombs are being dropped over their tent and they ha have hepatitis and they're not eating and they need medication you you're so strong like i hope you give yourself credit for the advocacy that you have been doing like even in this adversity, the ability to still like cognitively, th cognitively think and like, okay, who can I reach out to? Who can I talk to? You're doing it. Like you're doing everything that you yeah. do. And I, and I just, we're going to keep supporting you. Thank you. I just want you Thank to know you. you're amazing. Thank you so much. Like, as I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm really honest with you guys. Like you are my second family and I had, a second saplings on uh, TikTok as well. I have mentioned that. Imagine that I've been and for real, like talking to myself, like walking to myself, walking alone on the street, like talking to myself which, out loud, you know, and even like holding this this notebook. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. Kinda. <laughs> yeah. It's the green screen. <laughs> this, this one, yeah. Mm. Like calculating how much is I how much I need, um, uh, where should I go? How much oh. we are missing? Who should I call? Like I wrote um, a bunch of uh, business Palestinian businessmen, and I tried to call. I tried to to meet them with false hope. Unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, that, that 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 is that is unfortunately the the world that we're dealing with not everybody is willing to even just listen um which yeah. i think is deplorable because we at least owe it to our palestinian friends to hear their stories like this should not be happening they should not be dealing with this or going through this alone not when it's our money making it happen yeah yeah. Um, so we're, we're at 54 minutes now. Does anybody have any questions? Does anyone want to chime in and say anything? Um, minute, if there's anything that you haven't said, um, and guys in the audience, please remember things like $5, um, does go a long way because when this stream, like right now there's 35 people watching, you know, if 35 people were able to give $5 or, you know, as this stream continues to be pushed out to other people, more people are directed to um, Minna's content, you know, through our sharing, those five start to add up and that $7,000 goal starts to shrink because she's so very close to being able to get all her family to safety and not have to pick and choose, right? No one wants... 
how, how could you, you know, it's like that analogy that people throw at you sometimes like at a stupid party when people are drinking too much and oh, you, there's people in the water and you've got one lifesaver. Who are you throwing it to? Like, this is a horrible, true story right now. We can't yeah. let this happen. We have to help by whatever means necessary. And if that means, you know, $5, maybe not going out and buying that cake that you were going to buy or the coffee, whatever it is, or asking, you know, maybe a rich friend to match your $5 or heck, maybe they want to give more. Um, like, don't be afraid to ask. Trust me. I'm, I'm asking people myself. <laughs> um, and sometimes you really do get a good response. So, and just, uh, uh, it looks like there's like a big gap because it's in uh, Danish Kronar, but she's only yes. like 7,000, 6,000 away from the goal, which right. is really not yeah. that much. Um, if just a couple of people give um, a good amount. Um, yeah, I, she. It, it looks like there's a large gap, but honestly, like she can hit this goal fairly quickly if everyone kind of just gives a little bit. Um, I just gave some. I hope that other people will be Willing to get Mina um, across the thank goal. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, um, yes. Kat. Richard, exactly. <laughs> I just wanted to thank you all again. Uh, you are here, and from the beginning, you guys like. I've been trying uh, for to read you since I started to, to advocate for my sister campaign, and I do remember that I was I I. Yeah, I stood, woke up for like, wake up for, wake up. Okay, I'm losing my words. I stood one night when you had this uh, live with Abir, remember? And when I had the chance to speak, I lost it all. Like I start, I started to, to cry, if you guys remember. And I lost, I lost my word. Like, okay, I need your help. But I've been there for hours and listening to other uh, family stories who lost one of the family member who someone who in the hospital, I was like traumatized and like I got the fear that I will I will witness such an, a thing uh, toward my sister. So at that moment, I said, OK, uh, OK, Minna, you need to be strong. You need to fight. You need to be there in this um, in this uh, platform. You need voice. Your voice will, will reach as much people as you will uh, be there. So uh, thank you all for this. And through you guys, I always say that the power of we, you, will reach our, our goal. And we will able to save other families' lives. So thank you so much. And I hope that you will meet Raghda, Tamir, and the kids in a, in a such amazing video once they are evacuated to Egypt. And remember, the time is running by so fast. And the process of register their names on Yahala office, it will take one month to one month and two weeks so the more faster we are, the more I will able to travel to Egypt in order to uh, register their names at Yahala office, the, the faster that they are evacuated. So um, through this live on YouTube, I'm asking you, Hampoli and like sister to sister, uh, sister to brother, and a family for a family, to look into my story and my sister case and try to, to contribute with um, five or $10 to make this uh, process like, uh, or to proceed faster in this uh, uh, campaign so we can witness or, and achieve such an uh, amazing moment that I'm, I'm, I'm excited to witness with you, with my sister. Uh, you are muted. 
So Oopsie. Just... Yeah, I, I was just saying I'm we're excited for that day. I, I'm hopeful for that day to be very soon that we can witness them free, evacuated safely. Yeah, and I have to, I just remember to mention one thing, one important thing that when I reached some celebrate reached some in NASA, uh, all I, I do respect them all. Like they are like uh, friends to me. I met them here and on 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 the ground. Uh, they have one point of view, which is uh, we are not in a place to empty Gaza from its people. So, for the people who are thinking this way, we are not trying to leave Gaza empty. We're trying to evacuate our families to get a second chance to live. So once they have this chance, they can go back to Gaza and build it again. Right. However, for some people, they are trying to just feed people and keep them in Gaza, trying to, like, you are not helping them. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry to say this word. Like, you are not helping us. We need them, we need them strong, alive, healthy, in order to go back to, to for, for, for like to go back to their lands right to, to build their houses you are just making things worse by providing people there with food and water if, if as i said before if if they are not if they will not be killed by bomb and or tanks or whatever you they they will be killed uh, from lack of food medication water the heat wave etc so please please for all the people that are listening we are not trying to let gaza behind us we love our land and we are sure that we will go back to it for my sister for example she refused to to create her a uh, gofundme account uh, since the, 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 the start of, of the G, G side, I created the account on Feb, February, mid-February. She was refusing to mention her name, her photos, her kids, everything to the, to the public. And she, she told me that I'm going back to the north. I'm going to build my house again. I have a land over there. And now... Every time I, I speak or I, I have the chance to talk with, with my sister, she's always telling me I just need to evacuate Tamir to get his uh, hospitalization, a proper hospitalization. And then I will go back to Gaza. I will go back to the north. I will rebuild the house. I will let my kids again uh, get their, their education. Um, I'm, I'm actually glad that you brought that point up, um, because, and as like Corey said in, in the audience here, what is the point of people in Gaza if they are too sick to rebuild and even survive, right? Um, our goal isn't to take everybody out of Gaza. We just want them to survive. That's why we have different um, like pages down here for those who are, they just want to stay and they want support, right? We have um, the perinatal project, the OOB perinatal project, where we are helping deliver um, food, diapers, things of that nature. Like there's things that we're also supporting on the ground, as well as other, or, like we're not the only one, as well as other organizations to help people who who do want to stay, who do just need food and water or to buy a tent. We we have those um, links on here as well. So to simply say that our goal is to only move people out and that's giving the Zionists what they want is wrong. Letting people die is what the Zionists want. That's the only goal of, of the colonizers, right? So our goal is to keep people alive first and then build these relationships like we're building with you, Minna, 
So, you know, we know like your family's names, like we're part of the community now, like we're learning the culture as we do this. And this is an experience where we have an opportunity to come together and to truly make change. Um, I'm not saying it's going to be overnight, but um, giving the Zionists what they want is not it. It's never going to be it. Can I jump in real quick? Please, please jump in. So, you know, as an ally and as a supporter, right, I'm not here to make an opinion on what Gazans and Palestinians should do, right? I'm here to support you and give you the resources so you and your family can make a decision on what's right for you. And that's the best thing that I can do, right? To assist you with getting the resources so you can look after yourself and your family and you guys determine what is best for you. That is not my place. Exactly, Richard. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to be the voice of, there we go. Oh, Hi again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Welcome back. We were just saying, um, Richard yeah. was basically just saying that we don't want, I don't want to be the voice of the Palestinians. No, none of us do. We want you, the Palestinians, to be the voice. And if Palestinians are saying, hey, can you please help us get to safety so we can survive? Then we owe it to them to listen to their, you know, their story, what's happening to them how their lives have been in upheaval and it's not their fault. We're, they're everyday people just like you and I. Yeah. Yeah. So but, um, uh, regarding this point, so without you guys, we cannot even like reach the global, you know? So that's why I'm, I'm saying always that we are um, the voices of people in Gaza. Okay, and you are my voice to the world. Like, without you guys, I, I wouldn't be here doing this now. I wouldn't be on TikTok or on any other platform. So I always say that the power, the power of we as a strong and we can make change. Um, so the, the, only, the only thing that like cheer me up this morning the email of the GoFundMe uh, team that you can withdraw the $13,000. So I was really, really um, happy. And, but I will be more happier if I reached the goal and evacuated the whole uh, family together. Like I cannot select, for example, one or two or three, like, okay, one, one, uh, number one priority is Tamir, but who's, who's, who's the two with them? Mm hmm. It's so hard, uh, Sandwich. Like Yumna, she told me, "No, yeah, you will, you will do, you will do it, Auntie. You will do it, right?" And I said, "Yes, don't worry. I'm here for you." Aww. So it's um, hard. It's hard to pick to pick one member family family member to survive, and the other will wait. So I hope that I will reach the goal as soon as possible. And yeah, and th the point, I don't know where I just froze uh, when I was talking about the, the, we are not going to, to, to abandon our land, but mm -hmm. seriously, it's just, you guys are, for, for, for everyone who's listening now, you are guys giving us the second, like a second chance to live so we can go back and rebuild and, um, live our life like normal people. Again, we're not going to Canada or the States, we're going to Egypt. And that's it. Yeah, this is Tamer taking the car as a shelter in order to to secure the girls and, her, and his uh, wife at the tent. And as you may know that the tent contain uh, one to two families or one to three families. So men can, are not allowed to stay at the same tent they are in. And this is what they're eating. Yeah. If like they found, if they, if, if they have the chance to, to find uh, vegetables, they're right. expensive, super expensive. Mm-hmm. And this is not 
I, I couldn't survive on that. I don't. Yeah. You know. If you go to, yeah, if you go to 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 um, to a hike or to, to 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 have a camp in the mountain, you cannot handle handle it for two days. No. <laughs> Really? Yeah, you I, not I'm not it. even joking. Like I'd be Michael Scott out in the woods, you know, <laughs> trying to survive, <laughs> trying to survive. Yeah, and likely end up hurting myself in, in doing so. So, yeah. Um, yeah, having to have makeshift ways of of getting heat, you know, of of yeah. cooking, like e everything that they have endured, they've still been able to come up with ways to survive. Like the spirit is so strong. The resilience is so strong. I just hate that that is what they have to do. Yeah. There is nothing to do. What, what choice? Seriously, nothing to do. What, what choice do they have, but to nothing survive? Right. Survive. Yes. <sighs> I'm so sorry, Mina. I'm very thankful though, that we've been able to get to know you through um, these lives and chats and things of that nature of course the circumstances are freaking terrible and i hate it and i hate it but um this this is a tragic situation but we can affect the outcome yeah we've seen it happen right guys we've seen uh, people reunite with their families we've just had a whole bunch recently actually and if you're um just new to this channel um welcome we have other videos, shorts of families reuniting. So it does work. Um, again, Tamara was able to secure some uh, much needed medicine because of the contributions. So um, please don't stop. Whatever it is that you, you can um, contribute, it's certainly appreciated. Yes, indeed. And thank you all for in advance for the one who's planning to contribute, for the ones who already contributed many times. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. And we are not going to leave our land. Keep it in mind, please. Yeah, no way yeah. that we are going to support rebuilds, all yeah. that. Again, yeah. this is a community effort now. We, In order to make change, we can't just do this until like, it stops. Okay. Like, oh, great. Okay. The aggression has stopped. Okay. Now we're done. No, 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 no. no. And, and Fad, Fadi had asked me, he, he asked, actually, he asked everybody in the live. He was like, what are you going to do with your kafia? Like when, when this stops, I'm like, this is like for life. I'm a for life for now. Right. Mm -hmm. Like all of us here, we have all realized that this change isn't going to just come in one day. It's, yeah, it's a walk the path kind of deal and that included is the rebuild and oof, alhamdulillah i'll be there with my own hands to do some of it that's that would be my <laughs> to, to touch to touch grass over there would be like a dream come true yeah, yeah. truly inshallah. meet some of you guys inshallah inshallah we'll meet in person i hope i hope that we got the chance or we will have the chance to meet in person like the only thing that I am um, I'm looking for now, when they are evacuated, I just will document everything, every everything. I will share it with you individually, without this uh, <laughs> uh, mask on my face and the COVID. Uh, I can't wait yeah. for that. I can't wait for that kind of real change. Absolutely. Um, okay. Again, you guys, does anybody want to wrap up with anything? Anyone want to say anything? I want to make sure that everybody's had an opportunity to, to speak since you are our amazing accomplices. We're all accomplices here to doing good things. <laughs> good change. I uh, just want to say uh, I love you, Mina. I love you too, my friend. We all love you, Mina. We love you too. Love Happy you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. your story and being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We love you, Mina. We'll keep pushing love for you. you. <laughs> I wake up now, guys. Yay. Good morning, Sunny. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Tell by the sound of voice. 
<laughs> um, yes, actually, um, I don't know. <laughs> since, since Fabi is here, you guys, um, just so we could also introduce him. If you've not seen his live, he was one of our, um, oh, he, it, he was our very first OOB live on YouTube. Um, you can listen to his story, um, Fadi, thanks to the contributions. Again, real real change can happen. Thank you to the contributions of um, these amazing people. Fadi has evacuated and is now safe in Turkey, but he is advocating for the rest of his family. There's a pregnant family member. His father has a heart condition. I think his mother also needs medication. So they're dealing with some like imminent um, dangerous things, just as Minna, you know, Tamir has issues with his kidneys. So these are real life things. Imagine, you know, the doctor's visits that you go to are just no longer available. The medications that you need, that you normally have access to, just not there anymore. Um, it's insufferable y'all. It's, it, it's not good, but thank, you know, again, thankfully, Alhamdulillah to your kind donations. Fadi is safe, but we've got to get his family safe. So please go listen to his story. Um, there's a lot of families you can, um, get to know if you just peruse through and like, and share and contribute if you can, um, to some of their campaigns. Um, Anybody else? Sorry, I jumped in with that. But anybody else have anything? Oh, don't forget the conversion rate. Those Danish yes. kroner. Yeah, again, why don't we just... I'm just going to show that again one last time here. Yeah, because I have I have uh, one, one final comment regarding this uh, topic. There we go. Yes, go right uh, ahead. Like... Yeah, uh -oh. I, I, I took uh, all your advices in, in consideration regarding the videos, the uh, the photos that I'm I am uploading with my nieces. And I've been reached like many, many viewers, but unfortunately, no com contributions on, on the GoFundMe. I think the, um, the trick here because of the currency. So it's it's really important to go through the story, looking at the uh, four um, uh, lines at the beginning of the GoFundMe story, so you can understand uh, that uh, ten dollars is equal to seventy Danish kroner, and twenty dollars equal one hundred fifty kroner Danish kroner, and fifty dollars equal to three hundred eighty Danish kroner. And one hundred um, uh, dollar equal to seventy uh, seven hundred fifty Danish kroner. So um, since I have been like working so hard on the videos to reach as much as people to go to go to GoFundMe account, I think people will hesitate hesitate to to contribute because of the currency. But please um, just pay attention. Uh, of the main uh, of the main line on the on the GoFundMe, that the goal is twenty one thousand dollars, and the conversion of the uh, dollars to Danish kroner is um, ten dollar for seventy Danish Danish kroner for for example. Yeah, guys, don't let that don't let this frighten you. I have donated myself, and it, uh, it nothing's more frustrating. Uh, then going on uh, Mina's uh, uh, contribution list and seeing donated uh, 10 Danish kronar. It's like, no, it's it. that's not $10. That's Danish kronar. Oh, I, I got even five five Danish kronar. Yeah, I was just yeah, right here. I was just going to show the, right here this anonymous five. Like, hey, you know, every little bit counts, right? But unfortunately, mm -hmm. they're not donating what they think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's why. Yeah, I, I don't know if if Kat has anything to say regarding this topic, but this is this is the. I, the yeah, thing. I wouldn't talk about that on this live. We can talk about it as soon as this ends, just because I don't want to talk about like logistics on the live. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll save that for our. We'll bore people on the TikToks with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and also, like, if we can just end, we can also end the live and we'll still be in the room together talking. We can talk a little bit about it there, but I don't want to like 
keep it on the YouTube live, if that makes sense. No, totally. And so, so just when you're, when you're contributing, just pay attention to this right here and you'll be fine. Trust me, you, you will be okay. Um, but yeah, so Minna would love your support. We appreciate your support. Um, look at these beautiful kids, man, that it's a, a gorgeous family. They, they have hopes, aspirations, just like the rest of us are normal, everyday kids. And they deserve to, they deserve to have a future. Everybody deserves to have some kind of future. And um, I hope that we can make that happen for them sooner, sooner than later. So, inshallah. Thank you so much. Thank you for every one of you, for each one of you, for your words, kind word, words. This is more like important to me for being there to support this campaign, to support my family, to support me. Um, you are amazing. I, I just like when, when, when I have to speak on about you guys, I cannot find the words. And this is, this is like, this is who I am. This is, this is how I do express my feelings. I don't, I don't have any words to describe, describe all of you, to describe the hard work that you are doing. But thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do it with love. We do it with love. Thank um, you. Thanks, everybody. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe. Um, and again, no pressure if you don't have it. We understand. But just you being here, being supportive, bearing witness to the experiences of our Palestinian friends is a help. You know, really, that truly that that's what matters here in, in making the change. All right, y'all, we're going to end this stream. And hopefully we'll be back at it soon. Thank you to our OOB accomplices here. Would you guys like to quickly shout out where our friends can find you? And I will be certain to, after the live, to input your links into the description. So that way, if anybody in our audience would like to follow you and hear about the other families that you are advocating for. Kat, why don't we start with you if that's okay? You can find me on TikTok, the clock app. The clock and it and look, it's really simple. It's cat attack meow. Yeah. That's the name. <laughs> Dr. Cat. <laughs> and pretty much Monster Myron, isn't that your name as well? Oh well on TikTok it's M Y R Zero N. Okay, that's right. Point zero. Heart, 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 heart. <laughs> if they do M Y R Zero, your name comes up, I'm pretty certain. And Fadi, same with Fadi. His TikTok handle is his name. You'll find him. He probably has three accounts, I believe, because the clock app is a jerk. Um, Mustafa, would you like to tell us <laughs> where we can find you? Sure. You can find me on the clock app at Mustafa. Thank you. At Mustafa. Just look for that beautiful face. You'll find it. Mustafa, I, ya Mustafa, mm, anna bahibak, ya Mustafa, <laughs> Mustafa, <laughs> ya Mustafa. <laughs> um, Mikhail. We love you guys. We love you too, anna bahibak. Mikhail. Hello, it's Mikhail. Yes, you can find me on the clock app as well. It's the same name. It's just Valencia. And all you got to do is bark uh, if, if you want to call her out. Ooh. I have three Ooh. accounts, so it's either Mikal Valencia or Watermelon Girl. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to miss. And Minna, of course, your uh, yours is already in the description, but if anybody searches Mon Mon, M-O-N, M-O-N, you will find her TikTok account. But again, everything will be in the description. If it's not already there, I will make certain that it's up after the live. Please like, share, subscribe, and we're going to see you next time. Um, I love talking. you. All. Thank you. Change can happen. We just have to keep on talking. Use your voice, guys. I love you so much. I'm proud to be part of you. This is uh, OOB out. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so Bye -bye. much.